and gentlemen. All right, hello. My name is Santi Pinkerton, and I'm the Director of Communications for Elk Grove Unified. It's lovely to see everybody here tonight. Thank you all for coming, um, even despite the rain. We really appreciate you all coming out for this wonderful event. It's the uh, first time uh, that we'll have the designation. Um, so first, on behalf of Elk Grove Unified, I want to make sure I say thank you to everyone uh, for joining us. We're definitely excited. How many of you enjoyed the red carpet? All right. <laughs> Joining me tonight, I have five wonderful um, Academy students. They're Academy ambassadors who are going to be joining us this evening. And I'm going to introduce them quickly to you so you know who's going to be helping us with the program and moving things along. Um, I'll get through some introductions of people in the crowd. Um, and then we'll be, uh, I'll introduce our speakers. And uh, we'll be off with awards. So um, with me, the students, I'm going to ask the students to please stand up. We have Miss Sabala, uh, Miss Pyramida Sabala. She's one of our students at our Health Tech Academy at Valley High School. Next to her, we have Mr. Nathan Osborne. Nathan is a Digital Media Arts Academy student at Pleasant Grove High School. And next to him, we have Miss Caitlin Nguyen. <laughs> Caitlin Nguyen is also a Pleasant Grove High School student, but she is in the um, innovative design, or did I get it reversed? It was reversed. Nathan is the one with ideas. He's the one with the Innovative Design um, Education Academy, Engineering Academy, and it's actually Caitlin who's at the Digital Media Academy. So they're, they're with us tonight, and they're gonna help us with our speakers. Um, also next to Caitlin is Samantha Mark. Samantha is with our Design and Technology Academy. I got that right. Um, and she's from Monterey Trail High School. And next to her is Miss Karina Nelson. And she is also a uh, Design and Technology Academy student at Monterey Trail. Thank you. You can have a seat. So before we get started with the speakers, um, I'm, I want to make sure I introduce also who's on stage with us tonight so you know who the speakers are. So um, in speaking order, I would like to be able to introduce Ms. Hillary McLean with Link Learning Alliance. She's the executive director. Um, also, please welcome our board president, Ms. Bobby Singh Allen. <laughs> we have... Uh, our superintendent, Mr. Christopher Hoffman. And please give a very warm welcome to a familiar face. He's been with us supporting many, uh, many of our events, uh, and he's always coming out. Uh, Mr. It's Supervisor, Sacramento County Supervisor Don Natoli. <laughs> and also with us, we have Mr. Jim Sh John Shook. I knew I'd make that mistake. John Shook. John Shook is the president of the Elk Grove Regional Scholarship Foundation. Um, and last but not least, on our lineup of speakers, we have Ms. Cheryl Carrier. <laughs> Ms. Carrier is the executive director of Ford Next Generation Learning. So they're all here to join us. So um, thank you very much for being here. I want to recognize the people in the audience. Uh, many of you are here to celebrate with us tonight. And many of you have been very influential in making this designation possible. So I would like to recognize the members of our board who are with, with us this evening. If you could please stand. Thank you. And members of our cabinet and their directors, if they're here. So we have Miss Tina Penna, Miss Donna Cherry. I don't know if there's any others. Um, and um, I would like to point out that Miss Christina Penna and her director of career technical education, Miss Kathy Hamilton. Miss Hamilton, stand up. They have been key drivers um, to get us where we are today. Um, it's been a huge process, eight years in the making. Many of you are, have been part of it, um, and it's been this last two years that they've actually built the, uh, the linked learning master plan. 
Without further ado, we would like to get started with the program. So um, I want to let you know that receiving the Ford Next Generation Learning Community, um, Community designation signifies that our link to learning community meets the high expectations of academic rigor and provides real world relevance and career and technical education for all students. The Elk Grove Unified School District is proud to become the 19th Ford Next Generation Learning Community nationwide, uh, the 19th, and second in California. So that's a big, big um, accomplishment. So we're able to be excited about everything because we're able to stimulate young people about education and emboldens our efforts to prepare them for college, careers, and lifelong learning. So with mobilized educators, employers, and community leaders, we aim to offer our graduates an ability to, complete, to compete successfully in the 21st century uh, economy. So with that, I would like to introduce our first guest speaker to talk to you, uh, Ms. Hillary McLean from Link Learning Alliance. Thank you so much. It is such a pleasure to be here. I, I'm Hillary McLean. I'm the Executive Vice President of the Link Learning Alliance, and it is truly my honor to be here to celebrate with you with, for the designation of Elk Grove as the next generation learning community by the Ford Foundation. Uh, this recognition is something that is admired um, across our county, across our state, and across our nation. And the Link Learning Alliance is incredibly proud that Elk Grove has earned this distinction with linked learning as their central strategy for transforming the high school experience so that all students, as Anthony said, are prepared for college, career, and life. So here in Elk Grove, and you're gonna hear this from the students, here in Elk Grove, with linked learning, going to school becomes exciting for high school students. I had a chance to chat with a few of them, and they were just bubbling with excitement about what they're learning and how they're learning and what they wanna do with what they're learning in their future. It, you can tell that they're ignited, their passion has been ignited about learning, and they love to learn. And linked learning does this by providing an industry theme context for each pathway or academy. And this approach makes students excited about what they're learning and it makes them understand and be excited about why they're learning. They connect it to their future. Within the industry theme of each link learning pathway or academy, each, uh, each pathway uh, and academy integrates four core components in the link learning approach. College preparatory academics, high quality sequenced career technical education, work-based learning like job shadows and internships, and personalized supports to keep students on track. So those four things all work together to make the link learning experience. And link learning students can see how their courses and their internships and the support that they get from teachers and administrators and counselors and uh, employers in their community that they're working with all combine to prepare them for the real world at the very same time that they're getting prepared for college. So link learning not only makes learning more exciting, but it also gets results. A growing body of evidence tells us that linked learning students in certified pathways are less likely to drop out, are more likely to graduate than similar students in traditional schools. But even better, on average, linked learning students earn 13.3 more credits over the course of their high school experience than peers in traditional high school. That's about the equivalent of a half a semester more learning. So kudos to all of you. And students who start in a linked learning pathway with low prior achievement actually accumulate more credits, complete more courses needed to be accepted to the UC or CSU, those are called the A to G courses, and have higher GPAs than similar students in traditional high school programs. And link learning students also gain the professional skills that are needed to be successful in college and the workplace. So for example, compared with their peers, link learning students are 21 percentage points more likely to feel that high school has prepared them to work in a professional setting and are 20 percentage points more likely to feel prepared to work in a group and achieve a shared goal. Now that may sound like some boring math, but this is real world. This is what you do in life when you're in the workplace. And so these skills are so, so critical for both college and the workplace. 
And it is truly an honor to share the stage with the leaders in the Elk Grove community, your school board, your, your leadership at the, at the district, the elected officials who are here, who have all worked together to set the vision for this district and this community so that all students can be prepared for college and career. And I can tell you that districts around the state and the nation are paying attention and they want to learn a lot from what you're doing here. And that is why the Link Learning Alliance is so happy that the Ford Motor Company is providing such a public and powerful support for communities like Elk Grove through their Next Generation Learning Initiative. This shines a spotlight on how all of you are working together to transform high school, students' lives, and ultimately our regional economy. And since I live here, thank you very much. Um, and because of this spotlight and because many other communities are seeing transformative success with link learning, this approach is gaining traction. Just two months ago, the White House held a summit on next generation high schools where linked learning was highlighted as a practice that is reinventing the high school experience to better empower students for success, both in college and, and in careers that are relevant and rewarding in our ever-evolving global economy. And in, as a matter of fact, my colleague, Christopher Cobalden, who is the president of the Link Learning Alliance, actually wanted to be here himself, um, but he was actually called to the White House for a meeting today on this very topic. The, the president wanted to have a follow-up meeting on next generation high schools, and you can be sure that he is telling the president about the Ford Next Generation Learning designation awarded to Elk Grove Unified, and hopefully Congressman Barra can uh, reiterate that message when he sees the president next time. And I do know that the president and others in that meeting at the White House will be inspired by Elk Grove Unified and what you are all doing together here. Now, if you want to feel really inspired tonight, I hope that you'll get a chance to talk to the students that attend Elk Grove's academies and pathways. Ask them about working with professionals in their community and how it is reinforcing what they're learning in the classroom. Ask them about the academic rigor of all of their classes, of math, of science, and English, and of their career technical education classes, and how all of them relate to the professional world. Ask them what they want to do after high school, what they plan to study in college, and what professional dreams that they have that they are preparing to make a reality. And ask them what they thought of their linked learning experience, and if it has transformed the way they think about the future. So thank you so much for inviting me to speak. Thank you for being a leading district and community in the link learning field. And again, congratulations, Elk Grove, all who have worked so hard to make this happen on being named a Ford Next Generation Learning Community. Well, thank you, Ms. McLean. Um, again, I'm Premia Sabala from the Valley High School Holtec Academy, um, which is coordinated by John Bookmaster and Rodney Black. The Health Tech Academy is a public health-based program and one of the first programs to train and certify high school students as community health workers in the United States. I joined the academy during my freshman year without any idea of how much of an impact it was going to be in my life. I personally believe that the experiences, skills, and the knowledge that I gained from the academy prepared me um, to become, oh, prepared me in pursuing a career in public health. Um, health tech provides us the fundamental skills and knowledge that we need in order to become successful in college and even in the workforce. They also give us the chance to gain real-world experiences by um, making us interact with the community on an intimate level and by giving us internship positions. One of the primary goals of the Health Tech Academy is to reach out to the medically underserved communities of Sacramento by using the concept of capacity building and cultural competency. If it weren't for the academy, I wouldn't be able to figure out, oh, I wouldn't be able to have my realization of how passionate I am with public health. Um, after high school, I plan to attend a four-year university and major in public health. Once I've gotten my bachelor's degree, I plan to join the Peace Corps and give back to the underserved communities. Afterwards, I plan to come back and come back and work on getting my getting a master's degree in public health. Joining the Health Tech Academy is one of my life decisions that I will never regret, and I'm proud to be a part of the academy. Okay. 
Well, well, that's enough about me. Well, at this time, <laughs> I would like to ask our school board president, Ms. Bobby, Bobby Sign Allen, to come up and speak. Thank you so much for that introduction, Pyramida. How about a round of applause for this dynamic young lady? It's fantastic. And good evening to all of you. I am delighted to be here to celebrate this great achievement. I am even more pleased to see all of the students who are participating in this event. There are young masters of ceremony right here on stage, ambassadors throughout the building, and spirited docents in the Map Your Future informational booths just next door. They're all working very hard and showing their pride and outstanding work skills. I must say that I didn't know I would be rubbing elbows with such amazing young paparazzi on the red carpet on the way in. How many of you got your picture taken? It was pretty exciting. And again, I do want to thank our young leaders for not asking me that, that question that's always asked on the red carpet. Who are you wearing? Who are you wearing? <laughs> For the record, I'm not wearing anything fancy like Harry Winston or Chanel or Prada. It's just a suit that was on sale at Macy's. <laughs> so, thank you. Um, what a, an impressive group, and again, great job to the kids. Each of you tonight will leave with memories of a special evening that gave you hands-on experience to make real and relevant some of the things you've learned in the classroom. For me, the spirit of this event is rooted in one of the most fundamental goals I believe we must continually work to nurture and expand in education. And this is to improve access in a variety of ways to maximize the potential for all students to chart a course to a quality, relevant education and a skill set that will make them attractive to employers. When we enhance access, we truly enhance opportunities for success. When we enhance access, we make note that we will not falter in our effort to change the dynamic for kids who may have once viewed school as tedious and academic achievement as a fool's errand designed for someone else to chase after. When new doors of access are open, we unfold new worlds for students. We build avenues to match student initiative and talent with creative learning approaches that keep them in school, keep them motivated, and keep them growing, keep them growing the self-confidence that they can succeed and take that success beyond high school and into a career or college. That is the wonder of our academies and pathways, like the 41 we have in our, in our district, incubators of innovation and achievement, truly rooted to the ideal I mentioned earlier, that with greater access comes greater success. I am proud of the work that has been done to create our district's link learning master plan and have been an active part as part of the Board of Education to champion and ultimately approve that plan. We have been at this for quite some time. We believe strongly in this approach. And we believe that Ford NGL designation for the communities of Elk Grove Unified is yet the next launching point to build an even bigger and brighter future for our academies and pathways. Thank you. That was so powerful. Well, thank you, Ms. Singh Allen. Now here to tell us about how academies and pathways are connect connecting kids to, to school is our district superintendent himself, Mr. Chris Hoffman. <clears throat> thank you, Pyramid. appreciate that very much. Well, welcome, everybody. What an event, uh, rain and all. Uh, I'm very glad to have everybody here. Uh, First, I want to say thank you to all the kids. Um, they've done a lot of the work in setting everything up today. Um, and what you see before you are future videographers, reporters, if you hadn't had that opportunity, marketers, uh, engineers, healthcare professionals, um, and many more things here. So uh, this really is a view of the future 
um, of what our kids will be um, and just a great opportunity. So um, I want to give one um, big round of applause for all the kids that are here tonight. So. I use the term kids a lot, and some people say, well, that's not very formal, they're students. And I go, well, I feel like I put my arms around a kid. I, I own a kid. I want, I, want to, I want to do everything I can for a kid. So I use, I use that term, um, and if I offend you, I'll apologize to you later. But it is, <laughs> it is how I really feel. Um, the video work, um, really great. I would appreciate a little bit of help when you do the editing, though. If you can take a little bit around the gray, around the edges off, I'd, that, would be, uh, that would be really nice. Uh, tonight's a great night. We are here to celebrate. And as I started to think about it, a couple of terms came to work, um, hard work and dedication. And if you take a little bit of time and look around this room, uh, there is an amazing amount of hard work and dedication that's gone into all of the academy and pathways that we have um, at Elk Grove Unified. So just kind of take a peek around you. And every time you make contact with somebody, go ahead and do it. As you make, make eye contact, somebody here um, that you're looking at had some impact, whether student and being a participant, former board members um, setting the direction, current board members um, approving uh, the work that we're doing now, the teachers, um, if you, the, Ford, the next generation Ford folks um, had the opportunity the last couple of days to see our teachers and our kids in action. And I had dinner with them last night and they were beside themselves. We've been all over the country and seen phenomenal programs. Um, we've never seen anything um, better. Um, so um, thank you to all of you uh, for the work you do in um, making this work for kids. So I appreciate it very much. As we said earlier, there's currently 41 academies. Uh, we're not wall to wall though. We're not, uh, we don't have um, every kid um, in every school in an academy. Um, and that's okay, because what we are about in Elk Grove Unified is connecting kids. And we connect kids in a wide variety of ways. We do AP and honors um, courses. Uh, we have athletics. We have uh, visual and performing arts. We have clubs. Um, and what we've found over and over and over again, a connected kid is a successful kid. And what you see tonight um, through our academies and pathways are kids that are uber connected because they're connected in the classroom. They're connected outside the classroom. And moms and dads know they're texting and communicating with each other from home, and a lot of what they're talking about is the work that they're doing in their academy. So it goes well beyond the walls of the school, and that's what we're really getting the kids ready for. So I couldn't be more excited to be part of that um, process. The other thing you talk to kids about when you talk about academies, uh, they will tell you the work is relevant. I understand why I'm doing this. I see the connection of this work with what I plan to do later. Or maybe I don't see the exact connection of what I'm going to do later as a career, but the skills are transferable. So when I decide to do something else, the skills work. Collaboration, working together, uh, problem solving, real world um, application. So it's uh, very, very important. Um, I couldn't be more excited about our kids. Um, but the other thing you need to understand, and we talked a little bit about this in a previous speech, is it's not just about making kids feel good. We want kids to be connected. We want kids to feel good. But the other piece is what are the actual measurables? Are the kids learning at a higher rate? Is this worth the investment? And we have just a few details. 97% of our academy kids graduate compared to 95% of our other kids. Grade point averages a 2.99 for all of our academy kids to a 2.67 for other students. All students do well, academy students do better. Graduation rate, excuse me, graduation rate 99% versus 92%. And the big one, which was referenced also, is what we call A to G completion, which means kids are ready to go to college, to show up on a college campus and do college work. 69% of link learning kids leave high school ready to walk right into a college classroom. 50% of non-academy students do that. So when the, uh, the old idea about career tech ed or vocational ed was for the kids not going to college, that's not reality today. These are the, some of the most successful kids we have on our campuses, and it's very, very exciting and a whole lot of fun to see. Um, so with that, I just want to say thank you um, again for being here. Please take a little bit of time to talk with a student, talk with a teacher, talk with a coordinator because they're going to really give you some insights into how connected kids are successful kids. And now I get to introduce Nathan in your first opportunity. Come on up.
Thank you, Superintendent Hoffman. Uh, as the superintendent said, it is important that kids connect with their school. For me, the Pleasant Grove Idea Academy has helped me with that. So, first of all, I am Nathan Osborne, and I'm from IDEA, from Pleasant Grove. And IDEA stands for Innovative Design and Engineering Academy, along with Rebecca Hunter, Mr. Young, and a lot of other teachers. We've got a ton of them. Um, I've been a member of IDEA for all my years of high school, and I've loved every single year of it. I've learned many skills that are required for colleges and for the workplace. And I just, I, I really love the academy. So I joined IDEA because I had a passion for creating things and building things, and I wanted to use my imagination. And it, I do in IDEA. I do build things, I do create things, and I do use my imagination. But through the academy, I've learned more than just building things like architectural stuff and projects and all that the good stuff you learn in IDEA, I learned more than that. I've learned social skills through talking with people and talking with teachers and getting assistance. I've made many friends that I hope to keep with me for the rest of my life. And I've also gained important leadership skills through being on the leadership team, which is the group that runs the events and plans the events for the entire IDEA Academy, which also affects the entire school. After high school, I intend to get a degree in computer science and get a job as a software engineer. And the IDEA Academy has, will help me with that by providing me a background of engineering that's, and give me the skills needed to succeed in a career. And it'll give me, well it has given me the social skills to talk to people and to discuss because you can't just do things by yourself all the time. So. My time in IDEA has provided me with the perfect background, principles of engineering and stuff, to help me with this career. And without IDEA, I would not have the great friends that I have today. I wouldn't have the skills or the background. And I wouldn't have any idea of what I would want to do in the future. So thank you for IDEA and all the other academies. So, I now have the honor of introducing our keynote speaker, Sacramento County Supervisor Donna Tully. Well, thank you, Nathan, and uh, good afternoon, good evening to all of you. I'm uh, delighted to, to uh, be a part of today's program and certainly to celebrate with all of you. And I want to thank uh, Superintendent Hoffman, certainly your Board of Education, um, and the Elk Grove Unified School District for inviting me to participate in this uh, afternoon's program. It's an exciting occasion, as has been said, uh, for the district, for its staff and students, and I want to be among the first uh, to offer my congratulations and certainly commendation to the district leadership team and to all those, and I know it's been many, many folks who've worked so very hard and contributed in any way to this vitally important effort. As we've just heard, the district's vision for linked learning in its commitment to providing all students, and that emphasis on all I think is very, very important, the opportunity and pathway to achieve their goals and potential are key elements uh, in Elk Grove having been selected uh, as only the 19th, as we've heard, community throughout the United States and only the second in California to receive uh, the Ford Next Generation in Learning uh, designation. This is a tremendous accomplishment uh, for many, many reasons. And of course, the foundation for all this was laid more than 20 years ago uh, and in growing from one career academy to, as we've heard now, 41 academies, the district has expanded its offerings and partnerships with higher education, with industry and, and business, and with other sectors, and of course focused on the goal of preparing all its young people to graduate with the basic skills and capacity to be lifelong learners, which allows them to be successful in both work and in life. From a broader community standpoint, uh, this is hugely important. It's about our future, individually and collectively, and the fact that tens of thousands of students are better prepared, are motivated and interested in their future, and that we, the community, are confident that they will have the necessary skill sets and capacity to move into careers and life situations, I think bodes very well for a brighter and more prosperous future for each 
and every member of this community. The young people we see here today and have had a chance to engage with, uh, we've heard from some of them and uh, we'll hear from others, are shining examples of the positive results which are directly attributable to this linked learning approach and its focus on successful outcomes for students from all walks of life. The communities which comprise the Elk Grove Unified School District are culturally and socioeconomically diverse, and, it, and this uh, is represented in the makeup of the student population. Obviously, we see that here today. With nearly 63,000 students, the student body alone rivals in size the population of all but the city of Sacramento and the city of Elk Grove. But I think more importantly, the fact that whether a young person lives in a urban or a suburban or a rural portion of the district, their access to these educational opportunities and pathways is the very same. It's very, very important, that equality. When one looks at the academies and pathways available to district students, it is readily evident to me and to others that whether it is in higher education, agriculture, the building trades, business and finance, energy and the environment, health and medicine, public service, information technology, or a variety of other career paths and pursuits, students can avail themselves of an almost limitless array of educational and career opportunities and paths. As the Sacramento region looks to its future, it is clear, in fact crystal clear to me, that our future is reliant on how well we have prepared ourselves and our young people for work, for civic engagement, and for life. The teaching, the nurturing, and the preparation we have given to our young people will, in many ways, be reflected in the daily life of our community in the days to come. If we are successful in helping students become ready to become motivated and inspired to achieve, to accomplish, and to contribute in meaningful and positive ways, we will know for certain that the future is bright for them, for our community, and for our society. Uh, that we are on the right track was also evident to me in some of the comments, and we've heard them personally today from some of the young folks, but in the information I received to be able to explore you know, program and, and the academies, and again, we're gonna hear many, many more testimonies this evening and engaging with young people, but it was quoted that one student said that a research, researcher showed faith in me when I was 18 years old, simply because I was a Sheldon Biotech graduate. Another person says about the Ag Tech Academy, the hands-on learning, you're experiencing it right there, and it gives you more options as a student. Some students have to see it, to hear it, to touch it. Ag Tech really addresses all the learning styles and is a really positive environment. And yet, one other student was quoted in the context of the Manufacturing and Production and Technology Academy as having said about the academy, it has taught me many new skills that I can apply in the real world. Working in groups has improved my social skills and offered me many opportunities to creatively express myself in a lifelike environment. Those are powerful words, all of them. These are but a few examples of what students and others from amongst thousands of peers are experiencing. And I'm sure across the spectrum, Young people, many of them existing this afternoon with the videography, with the refreshments, with the program set up, uh, would echo similar experiences. To be sure, the initiative we celebrate today, the Ford Next Generation Learning uh, Community designation, will serve to further our efforts as a community in helping mobilize our communities su to support and encourage a new generation of young people in preparing to compete and succeed in the 21st century economy, and moreover, to lead rewarding and successful lives. The future of our communities, as I said a moment ago, relies heavily on the ability to help translate what is learned in the classroom to what will become a part of the skill set and inspiration, hopefully, which young adults will take with them in their journey through life. Employers and business leaders, many of whom are here today and many who have been a part of this pro uh, process and will continue to be, throughout our region will continue to seek out folks with the requisite educational qualifications, excuse me, skill sets, and the integrity, and most assuredly, those who can be dependent upon to fulfill their work responsibilities. Most every aspect of our community life will rely upon the innovation and dedication of a workforce which is prepared to meet the challenges of an evolving and dynamic economy where innovation and initiative are valuable and valued assets. So whether you call Al Grove or Sacramento or Rancho Cordova, or anywhere else in our region home. The future of our community rests with all of us, but especially with the young people. We as a community need to embrace efforts to secure our future and through cooperative and mutually supportive partnerships, work together to help pave the way for our young people to be successful. For in so doing, we assure a brighter future 
And as Henry Ford said, quote, if everyone is moving forward together, then success takes care of itself. Being a Ford Next Generation learning community is a big deal, and it carries with it both benefits and responsibilities. But the responsibility to succeed is a collective endeavor, and it appears we are well positioned through the leadership of the Elk Grove Unified School District and its many, many partners to meet the challenges of helping our young people to achieve their potential in life and in career pursu pursuits. In closing, I want to once again offer my congratulations to the district and to the community partners on having achieved this milestone designation. I know that immediately following the ceremony, students and their parents will join us by the hundreds, maybe by the thousands, for the Map Your Future Exposition. And I trust that as they begin to map their future, they too will begin to map the future of our communities and our region. I wish them every success in this important endeavor. For in working together, I'm confident we will build stronger neighborhoods and more vibrant communities. We will position our workforce to be on the cutting edge of product development and service delivery. We will thrive and prosper individually and collectively. And we will succeed in creating a bright future for all of us, both now and for generations to come. Congratulations, Elk Grove District. Thank you for allowing me to be a part of the program today. So at this time, I would like to um, bring up Congressman Amibera to say a few words before he has to depart. That's called an audible. Um, you know, I am extremely proud to be up here. You know, when I think about why my wife and I chose to move to Elk Grove, it's because of the school district. You know, our daughter went to elementary school and junior high here, and you know, it, she's a freshman in, in college now, and she got a wonderful education. And when I think about my education, I'm a lifelong Californian. My mom was a public school teacher. I'm a product of California's public schools. And, you know, I grew up going to schools that had wood shop, metal shop, auto shop, home ec, um, and had all of those. Now, I was a math and science guy, but I took metal shop. And my project was to build a bench press. Now, when I finished building that bench press, it wobbled. And that wasn't, you know, how I used mathematics, but I looked at so many kids that I went to school with who maybe calculus wasn't their thing or trigonometry, but you put them in those vocational classes and they used mathematics in a very different way. They applied it. They were precise. And I still keep in touch with a lot of the, my friends from high school, and they've all gone on to these incredibly successful careers. So when the superintendent said, it's not, vocational and technical education is not about kids who are not going to college, maybe that isn't their desire, but when you cite the statistics, when you have this well-rounded education, you can go off and do anything. So I want to applaud the teachers that are in here because you really are inspiring that next generation. I want to applaud the students that are in here because out there somewhere is that future doctor, a future congressman, a future senator. Maybe there's a future president of the United States out there in that, that audience. But what this does, it allows you to build your whole mind, not just one part of your mind, and imagine and go out there. And I couldn't be so proud as an Elk Grove resident and someone whose daughter benefited from the school district that we've got one of the best, if not the best school district in the country. So thank you. Thank you for letting me up. Thank you, Congressman Amibera. Um, now, to tell us about important industry partnerships and how they're supporting education and students like all of us here tonight, please welcome John Shook, Chairman of the Elk Grove Regional Scholarship Foundation. Good evening. About a month ago, I think it was, that Santi called me and asked me if I'd be a guest speaker. I said, sure. What am I speaking about? So I had no idea about all these academies. You know, I'm president of the Elk Grove Regional Scholarship Foundation. We provide scholarships to kids, but to actually go to these academies, it's just, it blew me away. So she sends me this packet and I read through it. I said, okay, this is interesting. 
and I meet with uh, Kathy Hamilton and Sue Hubbard, and they go over it a little bit. Well, yesterday I got a chance to visit some academies at two of our schools, Florin High School and Laguna Creek High School. It just blew me away. You know, I went into a class, and there was kids making Estes rockets to shoot off. I said, what class is this? This is math class. I, said, I mean, it was just amazing that what they're doing in these academies and, you know, making these kids their passion and their learning. You know, in the uh, green energy technology, they did a project. They had to write a paper on the project. Well, that paper with their academy, the next step for it was to go to the English teacher. So English was involved in that. And the solar panel things that they were building in that academy was just amazing. You know, I didn't want to leave. You know, I couldn't think about what to talk about tonight. When I went to those academies yesterday, when I went home, my wife couldn't shut me up. You know, <laughs> really. I, I went to work today at the office. That's all I was talking about was the academies and how amazing it is. So these academies and the way a lot of them, they're, they're structured, they have to have business involvement and community involvement. So the businesses need to be involved in this and the community. It's not just the schools. It's not the teachers. And the parents are involved, yes, but it has to be the whole community to make this happen. It has to be the businesses to make this happen. We all need to be involved. You know, uh, I'm sure that a few of you read the paper last week, and I, they had one of my favorite quotes in there. And it's always been one of my favorite quotes. It was by Franklin Delano Roosevelt, our past president. And he said, we can't always prepare the future for our youth, but we can prepare our youth for the future. And that's what these academies are doing. They're preparing our youth for the future. Now, after seeing these academies and seeing and hearing about these kids and their graduations and, and how many of them go on to school, that's put another task on me also, not to be just involved as a business leader in the community with the academies, but now with the foundation, we need to create more scholarships and raise more money for these kids to go on, right? Really. You know, we're going we're gonna to have these academies and, and our schools are going to be teaching them and prepare them for college. We need to make them able to continue and go to college. So it's a whole effort here with everybody in the community to do this. So I want to congratulate the Elk Grove School District for this prestigious award. And I just want to tell you, I'm on board. We'll get businesses on board. And this is such a great school district. I'm so proud to be here tonight. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Caitlin Nguyen, and I'm from Pleasant Grove High School, representing the Digital Media Academy. Now, I'm honored to be here among my fellow students along the cameras you can see there. And the DMA coordinator and teacher, Mr. Feldman. I joined the academy my freshman year, and to be honest, I don't know why. <laughs> I barely knew how to work a camera, and I didn't know anyone in the academy. So what was I thinking? And how could this program prepare me for the real world? Well, once I made my first video, I started to realize DMA's potential. As a senior in DMA, every month we are responsible for making PGTV, a student-run and themed broadcast which highlights the life of PG and the creative concepts developed by its members. Having this responsibility has taught me important skills such as deadlines, work efficiency, and working with others. Because we have to plan, film, and edit, we as a group understand we have to collaborate and communicate in order to make a quality broadcast. Although these are key points for my future, one of the most important lessons has taught, DMA has taught me is that change is necessary for improvement. As a former freshman who didn't know anyone in the academy, I isolated myself in my own little world. But as time passed, I saw others express their ideas and passions, and I just realized how similar we all are. By opening up to the community of DMA, my ideas, views, and circle of friends expanded. They've become a part of my family that supports and assists me in reaching my future goals. As I've grown outside of my small little world, 
I've become the type to take charge of projects, making my idea, my vision of the storyboard come to life. So I've decided I want to become a director. Through the real life experiences with film, DMA has already taught me what it's like to work with real clients and how to bring their stories to life. Being a member of DMA has taught me more than can, I could have ever imagined joining this academy. And so I thank all of you for listening to my story. <laughs> now joining us all in the way from Detroit, Michigan, Cheryl Car Carrier from Ford Next Generation Learning Foundation, Miss Carrier. Good evening. Oh, let me put this up. That's okay. Oh, as I break it. Good evening. Um, it's really hard to follow students, right? Um, you guys are great, and that's why we're all here today. Um, I'm really, really happy to be back. I've um, been working with Elk Grove for eight years. I only wish that I had brought my winter coat. I'm coming from Michigan, and I'm not sure it's much um, warmer <laughs> here than it is. <laughs> So, <laughs> um, anyway, next time I hope I, I come back, it's a little warmer. Anyway, uh, so I'm going to tell you a little story uh, because I get questions um, all the time about, you know, what is Ford, a global automotive company, doing? Um, you know, what do you have to do with education? Well, it's really kind of interesting because I asked that same question much like you did. Um, you know, what are we doing, right? Um, about 14 years ago, I was... Um, I was interviewed for this job to work in education at, for, at the Ford Motor Company Fund. And honestly, if I'd known how difficult uh, it, this world was for teachers and educators, I would have said no. But frankly, I was not that smart and um, took the job. And I have to tell you, it's the most rewarding thing I've ever done in my life. Um, Ford has been very involved in education for a long time and really supporting it. Um, in a very deep and on-the-ground kind of way. Um, one of the things that Ford was seeing um, across the country and in communities where we work and live was that students were, you know, really disengaging in high school and sometimes earlier because they just didn't see the relevance. They, you know, they didn't get it, right? And, um, and you know, if they didn't get it, and, and I was one of those kids that didn't get algebra, <laughs> And um, still, my hair stands up in the back of my neck when I have to do a problem. Um, I would have really benefited from an academy. But there's a fundamental belief that all students really have the opportunity, and they, they can learn, and they can be successful if we provide them with ways to engage in their learning in really meaningful ways. So um, much of our work uh, in education has been done around um, developing curriculum that is authentic and real world and, um, and helping develop teacher professional development that really focuses on helping teachers understand um, a bit more about um, the world of work so that they can bring that relevance and reality back to the classroom. What, I, what happened around 2006 was I started having some very sleepless nights because we had invested millions of dollars in uh, the development of curriculum and teacher professional development, but if a teacher left or a principal left, then this incredible work and the great projects that the students were working on would go away. And, um, you know, I had invested a lot of the company's money, and finally I said, you know, we have to think differently about how we're supporting education. We have to think about um, what kind of systems need to be in place to support teachers as they, they engage in this really uh, authentic and exciting curriculum um, and work with students. And so I was introduced to the academy model at that time, and I was really blown away. And um, um, I, yeah, after traveling around the country to see really great academies in all different parts of the United States, I came back and I was working with a consultant at the time and I said, if this is so great, why aren't there more of them? You know, what's going on here? This is amazing. These kids are doing great. They're, you know, graduation rates are soaring in these communities with these academy students. And truthfully, we did some research and what we found was that, you know, we were right on about transforming the teaching and learning to be relevant and engaging. Um, and we were 
pretty right on about having a system in place to support you know, um, change that is uh, transformative. Um, what we didn't know and what we learned was that in communities that had been able to scale and sustain their academies um, in this really vibrant learning over time, they had a very meaningfully engaged business and civic community. And I'm not talking about an afterthought. I'm talking about they're at the table to help the district think about what, what kinds of jobs are available in the future. Um, what kind of skills do students need to, to know or have or, you know, when they, when they walk through our doors? Um, and business wants to engage and they want to do, they want it to be meaningful, but they really don't know how to do it. So um, that led us to develop the Ford Next Generation Learning um, model. And we focus on those three things um, that I mentioned, transforming teaching and learning, creating systems, and um, and helping, really helping bring the larger community to the table in the development of a plan that can be scaled and sustained over time. Um, and I'm really excited to be working with Link Learning because Link Learning is, uh, has been adopted in the state of California. Uh, it is not yet moved across the country. I suspect that someday it will, but we blend really well together. And um, it's, this is the first time we've worked together. And I want to thank Tom Besaw from our team at Ford, who, who actually um, worked very closely with Link Learning. So um, I see this as a model that you guys are going to help us all replicate um, in California and, and probably across the country. So this is a big, we're putting a big burden on you with this designation because we're expecting you to really help other communities, you know, take this further. Um, I also want to say something about Elk Grove. I mean, Elk Grove, uh, we've had a partnership with them for, I don't know, I see Christy Moosters back there. It's eight or nine years at least. Um, they were, you were the first community that we trained for professional development providers that took the Ford Partnership for Advanced Studies curriculum all across the country. You guys trained people all across the country. And I see some of you shaking your head. I know that you, you all went through it. And look, we got some new stuff coming out, and we want you to train other teachers to train their teachers in other communities. So we're really um, excited about the partnership, and we can't thank you enough, um, Chris and, and the board, for um, you know, your commitment to this. Um, so this is really, um, it is a big deal. <laughs> Um, it's a big deal because we're looking at you. The other community we have is in the state is Coachella Valley. You guys are a long ways apart, and there's a lot of room in between, and we really, you know, your success is going to be the success for students and teachers and districts all over the country. So we're really excited about that. Um, so it's sort of a call to action, and... Um, and I'm going to tell a story because I'm in California. It's very short, I promise. And then we're going to let you all go. We're going to give some awards out and let you go. But um, um, I was told a story once by somebody that I just loved. And, um, you know, I'm going to tell you. So sequoia trees, as you all know, right, they're in your great state, um, live to be thousands of years old. And they're strong and they're proud and they just keep reaching for the sun. And, um, and you know, how do they survive, right? They survive because they lock roots and they hold on to each other and they hold each other up. And that is exactly what this community has done. And you've come together in a really meaningful way. And by the way, I just we, we, we met with one of our Ford dealers here today and she automatically signed up and said our dealership's gonna be in, involved. So we've made that public. <laughs> Thank you. But, what I really want to say today is that um, we need you, business and civic leaders, to tap on your friend's shoulders and other partners in the community and say, come see these things. Come see these academies. Come meet these students. I, over and over again, all I ever hear from students is I have a family at school. I have people that I would have never been friends with that would protect me and take care of me and not let me fail. I have business partners that are looking out for me. I have teachers that, you know, are making sure I'm not falling through the cracks. So um, 
you got to tap on your friend's shoulders and bring them to an academy and get them involved. And so I'm going to stop there and say thank you. And I look forward to being back at a warmer time. And um, I would, um, I'd like to get along, kind of move along with the awards portion of it. Am I, am I okay? Oh, okay then. I'm going to get out of the way. And uh, thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Cheryl. Uh, I want to have a, give you an opportunity to hear from two students. So thank you for the introduction. So good evening, everyone. My name is Samantha, and I'm majoring in the Computer Science strand of the Design and Technology Academy, also known as Data. I'm also this year's president and currently a senior. I originally joined Data because I wanted to improve my technology skills, which were pretty bad at the time, meaning I had no idea really how to type well, and I had no idea what to do when messages would pop up on the monitor. For instance, would you like to update to the latest version of Microsoft Windows was my worst nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not surprising that as a freshman, I was shy and had a fear of public speaking. But after being in data for the past four years, I've learned how to type properly, code programs, games, and I'm currently learning how to create and design web pages too. Along with that, I have broken out of my comfort zone by being involved in data leadership, first becoming a general m member, then, go then going up into publicity, director of publicity, and now president. These positions pushed me to develop my public speaking skills, and the majority of these reasons, the majority of this, sorry, <laughs> The majority of the reason for my success is my data peers and upperclassmen who have pushed me to um, aim higher. Being a part of the academy has really become my second home. There's academy coordinators, Mr. and Ms. Lascola, who I am very thankful for and who are the mom and dad of the academy. There's data teachers, the aunts and uncles, and there's data students, the children of data. <laughs> yep, it's this friendly environment. <laughs> It's this friendly environment that I was really able to test my limits. So I give a really big thank you to everyone in data who helped me develop my computer skills, overcome my fear of public speaking, and turn me into the leader I am today. So now on to Karina. Good evening, everybody. My name is Karina Nelson. I'm a senior at Monterey Trail High School, and I am majoring in environmental architecture in the Design and Technology Academy, otherwise known as DATA, and I am also this year's vice president. Looking back at my time in high school, I find it rather ironic that I landed up here. You see, I didn't actually intend to apply to the academy at first, and then once I decided to and got in, my freshman year, because of an unfortunate schedule conflict, I only had one data course. So by the end of that year, all of my friends were raving about data, and I was like, so what exactly is data again? <laughs> but the thing is, I had heard so many wonderful things I wanted to know. So I made one of the best decisions of my life. I joined data leadership as a membership committee member. It was in data leadership that I figured out what everyone was talking about when they said the data family where I became comfortable with who I was in high school, more confident and more challenged. Then that led me to apply and become the next year's membership committee coordinator, or MC squared. With the support of my upperclassmen mentors, I was able to start to implement my ideas for making the academy better as a whole. And now, in a crazy turn of the events, I am the vice president encouraging our inactive members to take advantage of our community service opportunities, cybersecurity competitions, environmental initiatives, and so much more that data has to offer. I would really love to take this opportunity to thank our two academy coordinators, Mrs. Lascola and Mr. Lascola, who's celebrating his birthday today. Happy birthday, Mr. Lascola. We all love both of you so much, and none of our success would be possible without your hard work and unwavering support. So once again, thank you. Let's please give a warm, happy applause to our students and our speakers. <laughs> 